Yo Alex here. When the OnePlus 11 was first announced, I was also puzzled as to why they downgraded various aspects of the phone compared to the 10 Pro, from IP68 to 64, USB 3.1 to 2.0, and they even removed wireless charging. But it all became a lot clearer when I saw the launch pricing. In the US, the OnePlus 11 starts at $699, US, which is $200 cheaper. And if you recall, the OnePlus 10T that came out not too long ago was priced at $649, so it's like $50 cheaper only. Here in Singapore, if you factor in the launch promotion for the OnePlus 11 with the Buds Pro 2 versus the outright price discount for the 10T, they actually work out to be somewhat similar in price as well. So I personally feel like the OnePlus 11 is more like the successor to the 10T, not the 10 Pro. And when I look at the OnePlus 11 from that perspective, it becomes a way more appealing option. Aside from the downgrades I've mentioned earlier, the OnePlus 11 is mostly based on the more premium OnePlus 10 Pro. So unlike the 10T which has a plastic frame, the 11 has an aluminium frame. It has top tier haptics, the buttons feel firm and clicky, the design looks a lot sleeker, it has that classic OnePlus alert slider, and the screen is using Gorilla Glass Victus instead of Gorilla Glass 5. And talking about the screen, unlike the regular 120Hz Full HD Plus panel on the 10T, the OnePlus 11 uses an LTPO3 Quad HD Plus panel with variable refresh rate up to 120Hz, which is even slightly better than the OnePlus 10 Pro. While the screen seems to be using the same Samsung E4 material, which isn't the newest anymore, it still has enough brightness for outdoor use and nice looking colours. According to some reviews I've seen, it seems that PWM frequency at low brightness is apparently not the best, and it doesn't seem to have DC dimming, so if you're particularly sensitive to a PWM flickering, do take note. Also, while a curved display does make it easier to use certain gestures on the phone, I still prefer a flat display. I find the reflections at the curved edges a little distracting, especially when watching videos, which is a shame because they have pretty nice sounding stereo speakers, and those curved edges make the multimedia experience a little bit worse for me. But on the bright side, the fingerprint sensor does work really well and is in a comfortable position. The OnePlus 11 comes with pretty much top-of-the-line specifications as expected. Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, LPDDR5X RAM, and even the latest UFS 4.0 storage which is supposed to be faster and more power efficient. This is a clear upgrade over the 10T and pretty much a night and day difference compared to the 10 Pro's notorious 8 Gen 1 chipset. The phone can handle 60fps Genshin at the highest graphics almost as well as a gaming phone like the Red Magic 7S Pro. It doesn't have a built-in cooling fan, so it does run a bit warmer in longer gaming sessions, and FPS does fluctuate a little in more complicated areas and combat scenarios, likely because they want to keep the thermals under control, but other than that, gameplay seems pretty smooth for the most part, which is really impressive. Not to mention that loading speed seems to be pretty fast as well, probably thanks to the faster storage. That said, I would personally still lower the graphics a little or use a cooling fan for longer gaming sessions. There is only so much a phone can do to dissipate heat, and heat is not good for the longevity of the phone. Thanks to the more efficient chip, battery life seems pretty good as well. The difference isn't drastic if you're coming from a more recent device with 8 Plus Gen 1, but if it's anything older than that, especially the 8 Gen 1 and 888, you'll likely see noticeably better battery life even in regular day-to-day -day use. As mentioned earlier, they removed wireless charging. I know it's a deal breaker for some folks, but for me, it's something that I don't use at all and something that I would happily give up if it means that the phone will be cheaper. Charging speeds technically got a downgrade to 100W from the 150W on the 10T, and the charger itself got a downgrade from USB-C back to USB-A as well. But it's really hard to complain about this since other phones might not even come with a charger at all, and the difference in charging time is pretty minor if you look at GSM Arena's test results. About the USB 2.0 port on the OnePlus 11, that's a downgrade from the 10 Pro's 3.1 port, but the same as the 10T. I don't really mind it too much since I don't transfer large files often, and I don't need to use my phone with an external display, but if you do, then this is not the phone for you. The OnePlus 11 is using Oxygen OS 13, and it's pretty much just a rebranded version of Color OS 13 with some minor tweaks and less bloatware. While it's not quite the old Oxygen OS that fans used to love, it's not that bad to me either. Color OS is pretty decent these days, and having a slightly cleaner version of that software experience with less bloat is quite nice as well. It has a lot of nice customization options built in, and I think that some of the features they offer are actually really smart and useful. Like this gesture that makes it easier to launch apps on the home screen one-handed is just so intuitive and useful that I wished other brands would copy this feature. 
And talking about copying, I like that it now shows the battery health of the device and it has some sort of adaptive charging feature that will try to slow down battery aging. In fact, it would be even better if they take it a step further and implement the ability to turn off fast charging and the option to limit charging based on battery percentage like on Samsung devices. Since performance has been a large part of OnePlus branding over the years, having a charging bypass feature like on some Sony devices would be amazing as well. It's great not just for reducing heat while gaming, but also a great way to extend the battery's lifespan. This is a feature that is super useful for folks who use their phone for GPS navigation as well. Now that OnePlus is promising 4 major Android updates along with 5 years of security updates for the OnePlus 11, having more features that can prolong the usable lifespan of the phone would be really helpful. Overall, while I think that Oxygen OS is decent, I still don't think it is as good or as polished as Samsung's One UI. It still has some weird limitations like being unable to turn off Google Discover, change the app drawer grid layout, and have less than 11 tiles in quick settings for some reason. These are still pretty minor. The slightly more annoying thing to me is how some camera settings don't stick. Even if I turn off auto macro mode or the flash for the front camera, after a while, they just turn back on again. But anyway, aside from those things, I think they are at least on the right track. They just need to keep working on it and listening to users' feedback. Moving on to camera performance, the main camera is able to capture some pretty nice looking photos, but the image processing is a little too heavy for my taste and can be a bit hit or miss when it comes to low light photos. I think it's mostly because of the automatic night mode which can't be turned off. While it works great when it's really dark, it has the tendency to use night mode processing even when the lighting is not that bad, and photos taken in those types of lighting conditions can sometimes look even more unnatural. Another side effect when it does that extra processing is that capture speed seems to become a bit slower. If you look at this example, I click the shutter button on both phones at the same time, but in the OnePlus 11's photo, the car has moved further away. I did find that adjusting the exposure manually will stop that extra night mode processing, and the results do look more natural, but it would be better if there was an option to just turn auto night mode off. Alternatively, they could tweak the camera processing so that night mode only kicks in when it's darker. For the secondary cameras, they are actually proper cameras and not just there for marketing like on some cheaper devices. The ultra-wide camera looks decent in most lighting conditions thanks in part to night mode processing and it can be used as a macro camera as well. The 2x telephoto slash portrait camera is more or less the same, just that it's a little weaker in low light. Video capture is decent for the most part and stabilization works well enough, but it looks a little over sharpened for my taste. Another unfortunate thing is that like a lot of devices from Chinese brands, video capture from the front camera is limited to 1080p only. That was the case for the OnePlus 10 Pro and even the more expensive Oppo Find X5 Pro. Oh, and photo quality from the front camera is just okay. It does quite a bit of processing and smoothening which isn't too bad in ideal lighting conditions, but if the lighting isn't as good, it can be a bit too muddy looking for my taste. Anyway, it does have a couple of extra camera modes thanks to the Hasselblad collaboration, but none of those are useful to me. Personally, I would prefer having 4K video capture for the front camera or the ability to change the aspect ratio and FPS for the film mode. Overall, while camera performance isn't mind-blowing, I think it is pretty good for the price. The style of image processing isn't my cup of tea, but those who are not too particular about that will likely find this more than good enough. I'm not sure if it's an upgrade over the OnePlus 10 Pro since I've not tried that phone, but I am pretty sure that the camera system on the OnePlus 11 is a massive and complete upgrade over the similarly priced OnePlus 10T. All in all, my experience with the OnePlus 11 has been largely positive. Great performance, good build quality, decent software experience, the rest of the hardware is good enough for the price, and none of the compromises are deal breakers for me. It's still not quite as cheap as I would have liked considering it's a lot cheaper in China, but that's just how it usually is. And with the local launch promotion with the Buds Pro 2, the Sandstone case, and the extra year of warranty, the price difference actually isn't that big. Not to mention as well that it is just such a massive upgrade over the OnePlus 10T. I was a little skeptical at first about the OnePlus 11, but after spending some time with it, I think it's actually pretty good. That said, I do wonder if the phone could be priced even more competitively or come with less compromises if they just drop the Hasselblad licensing, since it doesn't seem to be doing much. But oh well, it is what it is.